Personal notice changes my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Island in the Desert, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, ah, look at that. Dear Mr. Valentine, just like any amateur, like any old woman who shakes in her boots. So I'm going to say it different. Eh? George, you old buster, rescue me quick. I am surrounded by heat. I am shipwrecked in perspiration. I am lost in the middle of a hotel room in the middle of an island, half in your country, half in mine. An island in the desert, amigo, in the middle of the continent, with dirty old buildings for trees, with snails for people. Ah, uh, but, George, if I could look out the window across the border and know that you were there, ah, uh, George, then I could hope to escape. Two days I am here, and it is I who am burning up, because there is lots more in this old pair of border towns beside the heat that stifles. Sometimes it catches on fire, and where I should find just ashes, sometimes I find lizards, I find rattlesnakes, I find... I find... And that's all he wrote, huh? Hey, see, si. see, si, Mr. Valentine. The sheriff. Where's well, Diaz Pacheco? I'm mine. Or is that what we call you? I mean, here in Mexico. Eh? Oh, sure, sure, baby. Sheriff, eh? that's for me. They found the letter under his body, Mr. Valentine, there in the hotel room yesterday. I get it. Sheriff. Sure, why not, baby? They have one on your side, so I persuade my own people over here. You, you call me Tasco. Uh-huh. Well, I didn't mind coming down here in a hurry, but... Pablo! Pablo, the clean glasses. Gold beer. But if you want me to identify this guy who was riding, who got killed, you'd better show me his body, hadn't you? Go, go slow, senor. Go slow. This is not Tijuana. First, I show you my hospitality, my little bar. I wipe them off. Pablo, Pablo, clean. Pretty fancy hospitality. What, the slot machines? <laughs> well, this is my business. The sheriff is my pleasure. But in my own bar, I can also keep eyes on people, eh? Hey, move, move over, touch the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, excuse, excuse. Yeah. So, two birds with one stone, huh? Ah, here we are. No, oh, looking at you, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, tastes good in this weather. Yeah. Only this guy who got killed. Hey, he seemed energetic and crazy like you, Mr. Valentine. You mean stubborn. Yes, yeah, stubborn. All right, but what else did he look like? Oh, Good clothes from Mexico City. Young, tall, with a, with a gun. With a gun? Oh, yeah, he has a gun. Huh? Yeah. Uh, he carries it under his jacket. Dutchman. Well, excuse Tasco, but this is the murder you talk about. Wait a minute now. Go on, friend. What do you know about it? Well, we, we eat in the same place, the same hotel. We don't talk, but I see him hang up his coat, so I... Americans, you are Americans... He was Mexican. I am Dutch, you understand, and so anxious to get a passport to USA. Perhaps if you could assist hey, what's me with all your this? What's Dutch man. Could... What do you know about the man? Uh, well, Dutch. Nothing. You know nothing. Huh? Nein, nein, Tasco. Excuse me, I... I... <laughs> Americans must be careful. He's looking for a handout, that's all. Ah, drink up. And I have already checked around. I have a fax the official police will need. That's so? Let's skip the beer, huh, Tesco? Oh, but well, you and I are going to see that body right now. Ooh, 
morgue's the only cool place in town, huh? Oh, brother, you got a great sense of humor. No, no, I am not your reverend, only a realist. Death it comes often here. Like so. Eh, that is he. Yeah. Wore a shoulder gun. Well, he never got a chance to use it. His name's Riedos, Mackie Riedos. He worked on a case together several years ago. Case? Yeah. Mackie was a private detective, one of the best ones in Mexico. Private detective? Oh, so that's who he was. Hey, my sleepy town. He must have had try. some idea. Didn't he have any identification on him? What have you been doing the past 24 hours? Oh, must do things easy, senor. In this heat? No, no identification. Just a man around town asking questions and hiding his name. The letter was all I had to go on, addressed to you, huh? Yeah, sure, I know. I'm just a little sore, that's all. He was a nice guy. Hey. The wheels are in motion. Oh, don't worry. You have done your work. Now we'll do ours, senor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the matter? Siren. Fire siren. Oh. Oh, yeah, of course, the grass fire. The rains never come. But the fire is on the American side and the hill in your town. Our engine goes to help sometimes, that is all. Oh, no, don't be so nervous, so... Mackie Riedos was a fire insurance investigator. What? You heard me. He investigated fires. Well, so in my town, that would be appropriate. The Americans say you can fry eggs on our face. Vasco, you just said my job was done. Now you'll do yours, is that right? Well, uh, yes, but my hospitality... Okay, then go ahead and do it. I'm leaving, Buster. This place is too hot for me. George, what on earth? Mackie was a friend of yours. You're not going to just run away. Mackie and... didn't tell anyone in that town his name, Brooks. He left all his identification at home. Now, why would a licensed detective do a thing like that? Don't you get it? Oh. Yeah, sure. He didn't trust anybody in this town, not even the police. Pasco? Maybe, I don't know. But at least I don't want to beard that two-language double-talk artist again until I know what I'm talking about. You're going to see the local police here on the American side? Brooksy, we're going to see the American Fire Department. Well, there's only the three of us, Mr. Valentine, on regular. This is a small town. I see. I understand you had a grass fire a little while ago. Why, yes, Miss Brooks. Didn't amount to much, though. Mexicans gave us a hand. Hey, you burned your shirt and got your hair mussed up. Ain't that something? How do you think you'll impress the uh, lady with your hair? This is Place. He's our driver. Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine. And this is Al. He saves the babies and gets the medals. Pleasure. How are you? Hello. Place? Yeah, yeah, like between win and show. Yeah? Place oh. used to be a jockey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am now? Sure, I booted home more losers over in Kelly Place. You ever... Mr. Valentine's here to see about a murder. Well... How much does he charge? <laughs> Very funny. Now, listen to me, both of you. A friend of mine, a Mexican detective, a fire insurance outfit, was across the border on some kind of a job. Well, I saw the Mexican engine come over to help you, so I thought maybe you'd gone over there sometimes. So Mackie must have been around to ask you boys some questions. Hey, holy smoke. Tall young guy, kind of thin. Yeah, yeah there was a young Mexican here. That's him. Dead, huh? Hmm, that guy's dead. Murdered. Yeah. Well, sure he was here a couple of days ago. He said he couldn't do anything official out of his own country, but he talked to the chief, to uh, Slim. I think it was about there being too many fires over in that town. I think Firebug was his angle. Hey, come on, Slim's already down at the boarding house. That's where we hang out, uh, sort of a pool room, lady. Firebug. Mackie was asking questions about a firebug. Well, we never have any trouble on our side, but over there, well, they've had a lot of fires. Sure, sure, Brooks. See, that makes sense. And now I know why Mackie wanted me here, why he started the letter to me. What do you mean, George? Oh, my. Hey, where's the telephone? It's on the wall back in the office, sir. I'll meet you in the boarding house, that pool room. Well, it ain't no jockey club, Miss Brooks, but the clientele's nicer. Slim here rigged up an alarm bell outside for us. Yeah, but it only rings when Place needs an excuse for missing a three-cushion shot. Now, boys, boys, I'm retiring soon, you see, Miss Brooks. And that's what I told your friend Mackie. And I said that, in my opinion, a fire's a fire. 
In 25 years of experience, I've never caught a fire bug yet. And I said, in this area, it don't make much sense anyway, bringing coals to Newcastle, setting fire to Hades, and furthermore, All in right, my turn opinion, it off, Pop. Here I... he comes now. This is Slim, the chief, Mr. Valentine. How are you, Slim? Brooks, did you ask him about we the We made out a but... list, George, the fires they've had lately in the other town. What did you... Son, you know you remind me of nephew I had one? Yeah. Almost as big and husky as Al here. I used to say to him in my I'm opinion, sorry, Slim, but I... let me see that list, Angel. I'm in a hurry. Here. Yeah. Well, now, this here nephew was... City-owned uh... garage. That's the one, that's the one. What? Yeah, ten days ago. I talked to Mackey's office in Mexico City. They hadn't even been notified of his death yet. But that's why they sent him up here, to investigate the burning of that garage. Well, now, I remember that one, but there sure wasn't nothing suspicious. City garage wasn't nothing but a ramshackle. Chief, or... it was insured for $25,000 more than it was worth. Holy smoke. City garage. You know who that means, don't you, Mr. Valentine? I mean, well, it's just like in our country. Every once in a while, a guy gets control of Castle? a city... Of... The one that calls himself sheriff? <laughs> you should hear what the Mexicans call him. Uh-huh. I think I'll go back and see him now, Brooksy. But, George... Bosco didn't start any fire, not himself he didn't. Well, why would Mackie want me here? When he's Mexican, the insurance is Mexican, the fires are in Mexico. Oh, no. Mackie must have found that something came from the USA. Only he couldn't do anything about it. He wasn't licensed here, so all he could do was ask questions on this side. He needed me to run down... George, the, the fire bug. Mackie must have found out that whoever started the fire came from over here, from the United States. That's it, exactly. But then why are you going I'm down... going to where the trouble happens, friend. To the place where the answers are. I gotta find out what Mackie found. Son, I might be a bit of a windbag sometimes, but I'd better point out to you that your friend Mackie, he may be found out too much. Here's to me, he must have got killed for asking questions. We're getting too close to something hot. Okay, Chief. I'll see how close I can get. I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine, but I said no. I'm responsible for immigration here, and you can't cross that border. I what? But we were just over there a few hours ago. We've got a local problem to deal with. We have to cooperate with the other side. Oh, I get it. And they have to cooperate with Tosco. But look, I left him with the impression I was going home for good, skipping his hospitality. Don't underestimate him, Mr. Valentine. Like he didn't you. But he has no authority. But he's he... got a lot of friends. He'd know it if he got across to his town. Frankly, Mr. Valentine, I'm thinking of you. I don't like to let a man get down there and then maybe come back home for good on a slab. <laughs> Check, checkmate. Oh, brother. What's the matter? Hey, listen. The bell. Hey, wait a minute. That's smoke, Angel, on the Mexican side. Sure, that bell's the one outside the pool and the fire alarm bell. Meet me there later. George. Nobody's going to stop a fire engine, Brooksy. But I'm going across. Task or not. Hey, Slim, Slim, wait. You got a new fireman. Just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You've probably got your vacation trip already mapped out. Now, I don't know whether you're driving north or south or east or west, but I can throw in a reminder that will make your vacation miles more pleasant. Between Canada and Mexico and the Pacific and the Rockies, here's how to be sure of finding clean restrooms for your convenience. Just stop at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. Here, the restrooms are cleaned thoroughly and inspected often, kept well supplied with soap and towels. And when you stop at these service stations, you're never made to feel obliged to buy something. So wherever your vacation takes you in the West, count on the convenience of clean restrooms at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car.
Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You came to this devil border town because your friend Mackie Rallados, a Mexican private detective, needed your help. But before you arrived in the sleepy, sweltering place, Mackie had been murdered. Well, he wanted your help because there were things he couldn't do on the United States side of the border. And then you found that you couldn't get back into Mexico. But if your name is George Valentine, you found an answer to the dilemma. You've remembered that no one ever stops a fire engine, at least when it's headed for a fire. That was easy as rolling off a log, Mr. Valentine. Nobody even noticed you. Well, if I roll off this truck, how do you hang Grab on to this Grab your thing? bonnet, Nellie. We're round on the last turn. <laughs> Valentine, uh, plays you up against a little change of plans. You better get lost and hop for another part of town. Yeah, I get it. Tosco's bar is on fire. It's Tosco's own building. Wow, what a pile of insurance that must carry. Hey, and there's the guy who carries it. Go on, go on. I'll duck out of sight fast. Thanks. So long. Right. Oh, hey. Excuse me, hey, senor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, senor... Oh, hello, Mary. Yeah, you're one of the guys I'm looking for. You're the Dutchman who said he'd seen Mackey, the man who was murdered. i like to talk to you about the United States. You wanted to sell me some information, only Tosco shut you up. Well, it was nothing, really. Now, just hold it, Buster. You buttonhole all Americans. Well, Mackey apparently had it figured the guy who starts fires is American. Maybe starts them for Mexican property owners. So tell me about the Americans you see. Oh, no, 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 let me go. I don't know anything. Hey, wait a minute, you. On your coat here. Well, let's go. I wondered why you were edging away. It's kerosene. It's kerosene. Okay, Mackie, we go wrong. Hey, stop that guy, will you? Get out of my way, will you? Hey, stop him. He's the one. Hey, which way? He started a fire. Don't you see? Look out. Get out of the way. Board. Well, the fire's all over. I guess this is where Valentine and the Safe Passage part company. So long, fire engine. I got work to do right where I am. Hey. Hey, you, you. Wake up, will you? Hey, hey, hey. See? Si, senor. Now, look, I'm looking for somebody. Si, si. He's a Dutchman. Well, look, this is the Pazio, isn't it? Hotel, running house, whatever you call it. Oh, oh, si. Okay, well, does he live here? That's what I mean. Is he here? Look, there's a lady in a restaurant says he's been around for months, saving dough to get to the USA. Now, come on, tell uh, me. No, sorry. Oh, like that, huh? Here, yeah. does that mean anything to you? Si, all right, two bucks. See? Hmm. Not at home, huh? Where else do we look, friend? Where else? Uh... Hey, hold it. Maybe just his rum's good enough. Yeah. Well, what's the matter with you? Leave me alone here, will you? Go on, Gabby. It won't hurt your conscience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's five bucks. Now get out. Find out where he's gone. See, 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 see. Hey, what's this little book? Huh? Yeah. Mackie, I think we're getting even closer. Because I think we're wrong again. <laughs> Now, listen carefully, Brooksy. The Dutchman has a very interesting bank book. George, I don't understand. And yes, he's the fire bug, all right, but look. But how can you be... But what? What? Hey, look, I can't hear you very well. Oh, I can hear you, but wait till I raise this mouthpiece. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, George, I was so worried about... Now, skip about it. You're there in the firehouse, aren't you? Yes, in the office. I've been walking around outside, but I grabbed the phone the minute you rang. They've been back here for hours. Angel, you're yeah. alone there, aren't you? Well, yes. Everybody's over at the pool hall, I suppose. Brooksy, we had this whole thing figured backwards. The Dutchman's closet's full of cotton wadding and kerosene. And he's also made bank deposits on every single date they had a fire down there. Ouch! Huh? Oh, I burned my finger, that's all. George, there has been somebody in here where I am a few minutes ago. Cigarette butt still hot here on the pencil rack. 
I'm sorry, George. You said... Bank deposits, Brooksy. The Dutchman's been paid for starting fires. So if there's an American involved, the way Mackey figured, it's the employer, not the firebug himself. George! Angel, I know it doesn't make sense, but I checked. Every penny the Dutchman's deposited has been in American money and... Wait a minute. Call you right back, Brooksy. Oh, it's you. She... She... Oh, did you find him, friend? Where's the Dutchman? Holy mackerel, mister. The Dutchman's dead. Just murdered. Bingo! Huh? She... Brooksy, the Dutchman ran out of here just before I arrived. He received a phone call only a few minutes ago. His body's in an alley several blocks north. Toward the border, George? Yeah, that's right, Angel. He got called to his own death. And the operator said the call was from your side. But you said a few minutes ago. Darling, that's just what I said to you about a cigarette being here, but... Never mind. Get out of that place fast. Meet me at the American telephone office and step on it. There's a record of all calls that go across the border. And the only one around that time to that Dutchman's number was from where we thought it was. And that phone on the wall in the firehouse. All right, come on. But, George, I was there outside walking around, and I didn't... I know, but it happened, didn't it? Somebody was in there to phone. Come on, let's cut through here and take a look. Yes, George, somebody, just before me, but I... Mr. Lontine, wait! Wait, uh, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, 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 a little out of your bailiwick, aren't you, big shot? I explain. How long have I... you been around here? Come on. Since the fire. My fire. Oh, my beautiful barn. I come over. I've been looking for you, Mr. Valentine. This had better be good, Buster. I uh, I was not very helpful this morning about your friend Mackey. Say that again. Baby, please. Fire insurance investigation it is an embarrassment, but not a crooked one, I'm sure. A city garage burned ten days ago... They seem to be overinsured, but... Your the... bar burned down today, and I bet it had plenty of insurance oh, on it. Oh, my beautiful bar, baby. Had not one penny of insurance. I want your help now. I'm ruined. Not one penny. George. Okay. Come on into the firehouse, into the office here. They leave the door open, Brookson? Yes, but I don't understand. My insurance, I tell you... I the... heard you, Buster. I heard you. You said it. Hey. So, all right. This case has nothing to do with insurance. What? Yeah, yeah. In fact, you make it a whole lot easier that way. But, um... Oh, I know Mackey came here on an insurance case at Garage. And there had been too many fires. But suppose he stumbled into something totally separate. And that's why he got killed. Go on, George. Sure, that's why he was murdered. And the Dutchman got his because he could have told me the whole story. Uh, what story? The Dutchman got a phone call and came rushing to an alley near the border. Whoever called from here must have told him where to come. Who, who, who is whoever? Yes, how can you ever hope to tell who made that call? Everybody comes in here. Come they... on now, think, Brooksy, think. We'll never find a clue here, I know that. But what did you say to me? Something you said. You you were the next person in here, next after the murderer. The cigarette was still burning, remember? You burned your finger. Yeah. Yes, George. You said you couldn't hear me until I raised the mouthpiece. Yeah. Oh, hi. Ran out of beer over the pool hall, got to call a liquor store and get... What's the matter? Hiya, Tosco. Valentine. Al's a big guy, isn't he, Place? Huh? Al, Al, the guy you work with. Well, cigarettes never stunted his girls. So is Slim. Even Tosco here. Hey, look, what in the name but, of... But, del- uh, you used to be a jockey. Yeah, put him home at Caliente. Drive a fire engine George, now. look, I think all of them smoke. I, I... You've been exposing yourself to the sun, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Place. Uh, go ahead, call the liquor store. Sure. Uh, Senor Valentine. Yeah. Please. Yeah, Tasco. You kept asking me what else instead of insurance was involved. Well, that's simple, like all of it. But I grant you, I didn't catch on. What's all this? I'm not sure yet, mind you. But all day I've been beating my head against a border with its check stations, officials, and red tape. But once today I went across there without even slowing up. Because nobody would stop a fire engine. International cooperation. Well, now, suppose a real smart guy wanted to take things across that border. Wouldn't that be a neat way to do it? Smuggling? Carrying whatever it is in the fire truck someplace? Only being a middleman, he'd have to meet a schedule. He'd have to pick his days. So naturally, he'd have to hire somebody to start fires. 
Then in the crowd and confusion, I suppose it's an easy matter to load up or unload whatever the smuggled goods of the day are. George, about our telephone call, I remember now what I know, I, said. I know. I just did it now. Just now. In reverse. See him? Brooksy, you used that wall phone right after the murderer did. You're not very tall yourself. But wait till I raise this mouthpiece, you said. The murderer who talked on it before you must have been pretty short. The jockey place here had to shove it down to fit him just now. Uh, look, Mr. Valentine, just because I'm a jockey, so what if she is taller than I am? All this stuff you say, I ain't no... Why, I, you I, little gun. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let go of me. That's it, Sheriff. Guess you can go back to just frying eggs in your street now. Place admitted it was all true. Yeah, sure. He arranged the fires and hired the Dutchman to start them for him whenever he wanted to bring over a load or pick one up. He's so crazy, though. In it, baby? He should kill men, too? He should do this thing with Mr. Valentine breathing down his neck? Well, the heat was on, that's all. Heat like a snowball. He must have had a hot load in his truck to get rid of, so with us nosing around, it was the frying pan of the fire. He had to go ahead. Like a snowball in a frying pan. Uh, Our weather finally got him. Uh, Yes, baby, I know he makes sense. All right, Tasco. But I don't like some of the words you use either. Oh, please. Please, I know. The big shot's not popular, but now I will have to go back to work to build up my bar again, so... I will have no time for a uh, for big talk. Well, I'm glad to hear it. But that wasn't what I meant. It's the way you keep talking to Miss Brooks. It's that word, baby. So? And what is it, Mr. Valentine, you have against babies? Huh? Well, I... Def- <laughs> well, that is... <laughs> That's all, George. You might think that long weekend trips and hundreds of vacation miles would be the hardest kind of driving on your car's engine. But that's not true. Hometown driving is even tougher. For short trips with a cool engine produce acid-laden moisture inside cylinders. And that can account for as much as 80% of engine wear. How do you stop it? By getting RPM motor oil. First choice where driving's toughest. There's good reason why folks will tell you more people prefer RPM than any other brand of motor oil. RPM is compounded to keep a moisture-proof film of oil on engine parts. To fight off that rain of acid moisture, it clings to engine hot spots that other oils leave bare, stops carbon and sludge. In fact, it's the finest engine insurance you can buy. Ask tomorrow for RPM, first choice where driving's toughest. Ask at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. John Daner was heard as Tosco, Sidney Miller as Place, Peter Leeds as Al, Herb Butterfield as Slim, Anthony Barrett as Mackey, and Larry Dobkin as The Dutchman. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.